Congressman, earlier in this conversation, you did lay out some solutions that you thought would be possible. As you know, though, it is a divided government right now. Border yeah. is top, top issue for a lot of Americans or one of the top issues. I know H.R. 2 didn't have any Democratic support. There was a bipartisan Senate bill that ultimately failed in the Senate. The Union for Border Patrol agents, though, endorsed that bill. They're the boots on the ground, and they said this. They did not call it perfect, but they called it, quote, a step in the right direction and is far better than the current status quo. So when can we expect any border legislation to actually pass? You know, I first of all, you know, even though I have a lot of respect for my friend Brandon Judd and Art Del Puerto at the Border Patrol Union, they actually endorsed me. I was very disappointed to hear their, you know, their uh, endorsement of this bill. Um, you know, that being said, uh, as far as when when do I think we can expect legislation to uh, come out of, you know, this body uh, to do anything about the southern border? I don't think you're going to see it as it goes back to what I was saying. There's very little common sense up here, and that that lack of common sense, that foolishness, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't stop at the border. I mean, it carries right over into what we're doing up here economically by continuing to spend, you know, trillions of dollars that we don't have. Um, and so I'm going to do everything I can to represent my voters, be strong, and uh, try and uh, affect change up here. But I don't have high hopes for, you know, th this government. I'm like the American people. I the American people are so fed up with this place. They're so fed up with leadership up here, politicians, and I don't blame them. So am I. When you say you're fed up with leadership, what do you think of Speaker Mike Johnson's leadership? Do you have confidence in that? You know, um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start and say, look, I understand that uh, President, or I'm sorry, Speaker Mike Johnson has a very difficult job. He's got to, he's got to rally a bunch of different factions. Um, that being said, I, I haven't really been impressed. I, I haven't seen, you know, uh, Mike, you know, who says he has a conservative worldview. Um, I haven't seen him really lead in that direction. I, I've seen him surround himself with a bunch of people that tell him why we can't pick righteous, principled fights, you know, why we have to kick the can down the road and uh, fight another day. And, uh, you know, that, again, just like with Alejandro Mayorkas, I, I like Mike Johnson a lot as a, as a person. I think he's, I think he's a great man. But at the end of the day, this isn't a popularity contest. I I'm looking for leadership and strength, and I know that's what America is looking for because they realize that this country is in a very bad way right now, and we need men and women up here who have enough courage you know, to go against the grain and do what's needed to change the way this corrupt, backwards town works. I, I think that we need to take harder lines, more principled lines, and say, this is what needs to be done. We're going to do what needs to be done, and we're going to make them come to us because they need the they need the power of the purse, and we need to we need to draw hard lines, and we need to be willing to stand on those hard lines even when it gets uncomfortable, and that's what I think we should be doing. Before we get back to the conversation, I am just a little curious: who would you then? Who would be your ideal House Speaker? Well, it's not even a reality, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. we're so far from we're so far from who I would who I would choose. I would love to see a guy like Andy Biggs be the Speaker of the House. We tried to make Andy Biggs the Speaker of the House knowing full, back in January of last year, knowing full well he didn't have a snowball's chance in hell. I think he got like 20 votes, but that just shows you how non-conservative this, this conference is. I mean, unless you go out on the campaign trail, then they're all conservative champions, but um, you know, we, we start looking at their votes and, and what they actually fight for and and, and you know who they actually represent, and it's it's very far from that. So you know, I'd like to see somebody like that. Um, that's not going to happen in this body.